Hey everyone, Tony from TN3 Studio. Today we're looking at Enscape 3.0. This review is intended to get you familiar with the new user interface. So let's dive in, see what's different and see what's better. In version 3.0, we were introduced to a brand new Enscape brand, which reflects pretty well across their website and their new logo. With a fresh new look, the new user interface was redesigned to solve some of the old functional issues but also improve the user experience. So the main toolbar now includes the main essentials starting with opening Enscape, the live updates, synchronizing views, Enscape objects, materials, and the general settings. So all the other settings and options located on the Enscape Capture Toolbar have now been relocated inside the Enscape window. As you open Enscape, you're going to notice the fresh new look and how neatly everything is now organized here. This reduces the amount of time you spend switching between Enscape and SketchUp since everything is already available in one place. And right away, you're going to notice two main toolbars, one to the left and one to the right. And you're going to also notice the brand new help menu. And this is great for someone that is new to Enscape. It's great to have a help section with all of the basics and advanced shortcuts to help you understand how to run the software. And right next to it, you can see the home tab that is going to provide you with more information about other Enscape unique features. For example, if you click on the collaborative annotation, you can see that the home tab now provides you with more information about this specific feature. And just in case you want to get rid of all the toolbars, you can use the H shortcut to hide the help section and click here to also hide both of the toolbars. So now you have maximized your render window for a better full screen experience. So this toolbar on the right includes the setting for the minimap, the save frame option, projection options, navigation modes, headsets, visuals, and the render window settings. As for these settings, this is going to allow you to customize your render window. So you can replace the icon, change the name of the render window, and even switch the loading image. Be sure to also check the input settings, the 3D devices and the sound and set your own custom preferences. As for the visual settings, it is much easier to adjust and set specific values for each of the parameters. This may have been a small problem before, but I'm glad it's also improved in this version. And if you expand the left wing, you can now save your custom visual presets, which you can apply later on to any of your saved views. As an example, I'm going to create a custom preset for my interior scene. So this is going to be so for an interior scene with sun rays. So let's adjust the fog settings. Adjust the exposure and a couple of other settings. And now that it looks the way that I like, I can use this preset later on on my views. Now when you move over to the toolbar on the left, you will see some of the other main tools like the collaborative annotation, the BIM model which is best for the Revit users, and the view management. As for the view management, here you're going to find a list of, of all the views that are saved from SketchUp. As well, you get the opportunity to create new views from the Enscape window. So let's create a new view. And if I click on this icon, I get to set one of my visual presets to this view. And it's great that Enscape now provides more tools that allow architects and interior designers to explore design options with a click of a few buttons. Next, we have the brand new video editor. And for me, this has become more intuitive and simple to use. I also like how it now has a more natural feel to other video editing programs that are out there. So if you have previous video path setups, you can load them here. You can also show the rule of third grid line, which is going to help you with the composition of your videos. 
And these are your animation controls. So let's create a very quick animation. So let's click here to add a frame. Let's set the time between the frames. And when you click to edit one of the frames, you can see the frame override settings, which will include the time of day, focal length, and the field of view. So these are some of the things you can always consider when you're working on animations. So let's click here to update our keyframe and press the play button so we can preview our animation. And once you're happy with your animation, hit the export button and you have a chance to review your export settings before Enscape actually saves your animation. And to continue with the rest of the options, we can press this button to render our image as well as do a batch render. Next, we have the options to render mono and stereo panorama images. And finally, we have the options for the EXE and web standalone and share our projects with those who don't have Enscape. As always, you also want to keep an eye on the assets library, which has been growing with every update. So now the Enscape team has included 333 new assets, which focus on local regions. So this is going to include specific vehicles, different species of trees and shrub. So this is going to help you to be more specific with certain region and very unique landscape styles. So overall, Enscape now has over 2,470 ready to use assets for your project. And they've really been doing a great job and I'm looking forward to more diverse assets with future updates. Now the user experience is the core element of any software and Enscape 3.0 not only delivers on a better user experience, but it also sets up on expanding existing features and also introducing brand new ones. So it was about time we got this update and now we can look forward to brand new features that are in development. As always, be sure to check out the Enscape website and forum for information on new features and when they're going to drop the new update. As always, let me know in the comment sections what you're looking forward to seeing. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, hit the bell notification and check us out on other social media platforms. As always, I'll see you guys next time.